Good afternoon. Good, is it afternoon? Yes, it is. Good it afternoon, is afternoon, everyone. Yes. I'm Jalen Barnes, my lovely wife, Casey. Thank you for watching this week's Rapture Recap. Amen. Another awesome service, as usual. I'm going to stop apologizing for saying that because it just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be here. You got to be here and find out and see what we've got going on here at Rapture because God is moving at Rapture. Amen. God is doing great things at Rapture week after week, and He's doing them for you. Mm -hmm. So you got to come here so you can stop missing it. Amen. That you can experience it for yourself and see what God has put into place just for you. That's not a coincidence. To bring you deliverance and to bring you into contact with the Jesus experience, to bring you into contact with the glory of God, to teach you the word in a way you've never heard it before so that you can learn to win at life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, Father David has been on this series of recognizing the gift, recognizing the gift of God, and particularly talking about, and um, it's coming from uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 8 and verse 11, uh, talking about the gift of God and the fivefold ministry gifts, mm -hmm. and those two being inseparable from the man or woman who is the gift and the gift that God has given them to be unto the body of Christ, those two things being inseparable as a part of just who they are. Mm -hmm. And we have to, as the body of Christ, as members of the body, yielding all of our affectional measure, recognize that. Mm -hmm. And failure to recognize that is going to cause a holdup. It's going to cause a blockage in our uh, uh, ability to hear from God and our ability to experience mm -hmm. the blessing in God and our ability to prosper in the place where he set us mm -hmm. because we don't get the truth where we're set right. in the body. God sets it mm -hmm. as he pleases, as mm -hmm. it pleases him. That's not something we have a decision in making, but wherever he puts us is where we're designed to be blessed, where we're designed to prosper and to operate in the mm -hmm. grace he's given us. And he yield our effectual measure. Um, Brother Davis made a statement that, you know, we were meant to be the whole ball of wax by ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, however we got to the kingdom, someone introduced us. That's right. You know, and um, us discovering who we are in Christ, if we've discovered at this point who we are in Christ, that was because of somebody else that we connected to. And then once we discovered who we were through that door, yeah. um, the doorway that was open, someone else connects to us, they can discover. Mm -hmm. It just goes on and on and on. And you know, um, failure, like you, I think you mentioned this already, mm -hmm. but failure to recognize the gifts in the body mm -hmm. is detrimental to our development. And you know, we know the fivefold ministry gift, and I think a lot of people take that for granted and mm -hmm. those that are called. Mm -hmm. And I think the most powerful revelation today was in Romans. So what's that, Romans? Uh, Romans 11, 11 verse 29. Yes. And uh, it was read from Amplified, and basically it was saying that once God placed someone in the mm -hmm. body, or once somebody graced somebody mm -hmm. with this gift, God doesn't take it. God mm -hmm. doesn't take it back. Mm -hmm. He doesn't remove. It's irrevocable. Is what the, yes, that's what it said. It's irrevocable. Mean that God is not stripping people of the grace that He's given them to be mm -hmm. a gift for the uh, unto the body. Oftentimes, we demote people mm -hmm. in our hearts and in our minds because we get offended or or they do something. And, and sometimes people do things, but it's not our call to try to strip them from that and start cursing them because they're still a gift from God. Mm -hmm. And we have to still honor the gift that they are. And it's in our best interest that we uphold them and that we do everything in our mm -hmm. power to help them get back to the place where God put them. Exactly. Um, he, Pastor used an example today about the human body. He said that the human body is an example of the kingdom of God. Our body is designed to work together mm -hmm. in a way that if one part of your body is down it hinders the whole entire body mm -hmm. from able to function properly and he used the example of if your right arm was mm -hmm. broken and mm -hmm. put in a sling the rest of the body loses its power mm -hmm. or its output basically mm -hmm. and its ability to do things because that right arm is down so that means some part of the body is overcompensating mm -hmm. because that right arm is not able to add mm -hmm. its effectual measure also, the body is not working against the right arm mm -hmm. and keeping it from healing. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it's rooting it on. Like, it wants it to hurry up and heal mm -hmm. and hurry up to be able mm -hmm. to give um, its effectual measure mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So if your human body, your physical body was designed to help each other, and if your physical body is supporting the healing mm -hmm. of a broken number, why can't we do that in the body of Christ? Well, as Dr. David said, uh, the body of Christ persecutes the fallen yeah. when they don't see the value of restoration, mm -hmm. when you don't see the value of being restored. And really what you're lacking is an understanding of your own salvation exactly. because it's the same principle for mm -hmm. you. God saw you as being worth it. you got to understand is if Jesus died for all sins, past, present, and future, before you were born, he died for those sins too, then God must have had some awareness of your frailties, of your failures, for Jesus to die for the ones that you hadn't even been born to commit yet. 
So in spite of all of that, that's what you got to send about love of God. In spite of everything that you would do wrong, he saw you as worth it anyway. He saw you as worth it, as worth it to redeem you because of whatever call that he's got in your life. And when you understand that love unto you, you're willing to share that love and extend that love. We're able to love because he first loved us. That gives you a revelation of that because now I'm going to extend that love to everyone else in the body of Christ. I don't care what your fall is. I don't care what it is that you've done because whatever it is that God called you to be, whatever it is that he's called you to do, whatever gift he's placed on your life, whatever gift you are unto me, whatever grace is on you, that still needs to be accomplished. He put that on you and that's irrevocable. He's not removing that. He's not taking that away just because you messed up. In spite of you messing up, he gave you that call anyway. Exactly. He called you anyway. So if he called you anyway, I'm not going to stand between you and God and, and you and you extending your gift and expressing it unto the body of Christ exactly. and unto the world. Mm -hmm. Because if you are going to be responsible for however many people being one into the kingdom, I'm not going to be the one to stop you from being restored because now I'm standing between God and the restoration of those people into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be on me, on my account. I'm not going to stand in the way you know, of that for I a have second. to say that there are a lot of called men and women of mm -hmm. God that are not walking in their calling because people have made them feel like they're not worthy. Mm -hmm. Because people have abandoned them. Because people have said, well, you messed up mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm not going to trust you no more. Mm -hmm. And they write you off. And that can, that can really hurt somebody's confidence, mm -hmm. you know. And it's, we shouldn't do that. Because, like, going back to the example of the body, if our right arm gets broken, we're not saying to the arm, you're worthless, I don't need you no more, mm -hmm. I'm going to just cut you off mm -hmm. and just get done with you. No, you want that arm to heal. You are so, you are, listen, you want your arm to heal. Like, because you know the importance mm -hmm. of your arm, you know how effect, uh, effective you can be with your arm working in its proper way. And we do everything to support its healing. And well, it's, what, I, what I found is the deception that members of the body of Christ who don't practice this love walk mm -hmm. will do is they'll try to tell you you were never an arm in the first place. Exactly. And you see the hypocrisy in that because up until the breakage, yep. up until the fall, you were cool. You know, <laughs> they were singing the praises of your name. Mm -hmm. You know, they were pumping you up. They were saying how much they supported you, how much revelation you had coming out your mouth. But as soon as the breakage come, as a way to justify their division from you, They'll say, oh, well, you were never what you said you were. You know what you cracked up to be. But they didn't say they were that in the first place. God did. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you believe that. It's not that you don't believe that anymore. You're trying to find a way to justify yeah. your ability to walk in unforgiveness. Exactly. And no, no, and no. That and that's apply. a whole other lesson. <laughs> but I mean, like, for real. But that's the, the, the core issue. Mm. And, and Pastor talked about this man a couple of weeks ago mm. about people's inability to absorb the debt. Mm -hmm. We are deficient in forgiveness. We are deficient in the love of God to the point that when somebody do something that, you know, is mm -hmm. wrong, we can't absorb it. Mm -hmm. We can't um, extend to them the mercy yeah. of God to the point where we cover them, where we help them mm -hmm. get back because we believe in them. And I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm not patting my, my, myself on the back or saying I'm special because I've had to work in this area. Mm -hmm. God, God had to teach me how to forgive and walk in love. Mm -hmm. But I just have this thing in my heart. I, I When I believe in someone... I want to do everything I can to help support them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, people do wrong. Like I've done wrong and I've been giving a lot of mercy mm -hmm. and God has forgiven me of a lot of things. So I want to extend the same mm -hmm. thing to other people. So I would never say that because somebody has made a mistake that they're not calling God. I would never put my mouth on them. And they don't have to be a five-fold ministry gift. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to be a prophet or a pastor. But they can just be my brother or sister in the Lord. Called in the body. Called in the body. Because we all are called in the body. Mm -hmm. We may not be a five-fold, but we're all called. Mm -hmm. And I need you as a sister in the Lord or as a brother in the Lord to be at your best. So I'm going to do what I can to help you get there. Because it's in my best interest. Because you add value to the body of Christ. And that's what we need to learn. We need to learn to see and accept the value that God puts on each individual's individual. life. Mm -hmm. And when we can do that, the body will begin to heal again. We will see more signs, wonders, and miracles. We will start seeing more unity. The power of God will just rest on us like never before when we can mm -hmm. begin to see the value in each other and begin to assist each other in developing mm -hmm. into what God has called us into. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that Ooh, is I feel the like love of God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you for watching this week's Rapture recap and join us on next Sunday so you can hear this word. Amen. And it can be, because what it's going to do is going to free you. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hear the word like this, it, it, it brings you just into such 
captivity of the love of God. Yes. It, it frees you from bondage. It frees you from, from the deception of condemnation. You realize that God isn't condemning you. God isn't throwing you out. He's doing everything he can to bring Amen. you to restoration. Yes, and when that hits you, when you get, it allows you to be what it is God called you to be. And that's mm -hmm. something much greater than what mm -hmm. you are right now. And if you believe that, that there's, I'm meant for more than what I'm just living right now, day to day, then you need to be here so that you can learn how to be that. Amen. So go ahead to raptureministries.org and let us know that you're coming. We'll prepare for you. And God's going to prepare for you. And the word's going to be powerful. The praise of worship is going to be powerful. Signs, wonders, and miracles will take place because it's happening every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday Amen. it's happening. And so we love you. We thank you for watching this week's Rapture Recap, and we will see you on Sunday.